Welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing another video in my travel series. If you haven't seen the previous videos, this is just going to be an informational series. I have especially made this video for any Indian people who are going to be maybe traveling by flight for the first time or especially traveling internationally by flight for the first time. Because even if you fly within India only, the security and the procedures are much less. But if you are traveling to a foreign country, there are more rules and more safety protocols and everything in place, more steps at the airport. So today I'm going to talk you through my entire journey when I'm coming to Bangkok. So it's going to be from when I reach Mumbai airport and every step that I have to take inside Mumbai airport and then like fly to Bangkok and the steps that I take inside Bangkok airport also. So that's just because I travel to Bangkok often and I know a lot of Indians also would like to travel to Bangkok because there are a lot of flights from India. There is visa on arrival for Indians and it's not a very expensive place. So in case you're thinking of taking your first foreign holiday, I think Thailand is a really good option. And I will try to make this video suitable for other people also. I'm just going to try to give you tips if you're going somewhere else. Let's get started. So first of course, we've got to talk about arriving at the airport. Whatever time your flight is scheduled to depart, you need to be at the airport really early because you don't know what delays you'll face inside the airport. Sometimes there are really long lines or sometimes if you live far away from the airport, you might face some traffic delays or something along the way. You need to make sure you're in the airport at least three hours before an international flight. Even if you're not a punctual person otherwise, I know we have this saying, right? Indian stretchable time, where Indians are not on time anywhere. Please make sure you reach the airport on time because otherwise you might not be able to board your flight. Depending on which airline you're going, you'll be able to do web check-in before. Usually for international flights, you can do a web check-in 48 hours before your flight's about to leave. So that's two whole days. But even if you do that, make sure that you're there three hours before. That's just being really safe. I like to travel at night. There's a lot less traffic on the road. Otherwise, just make sure that you're there on time and prepare for anything. The next thing we are going to have to address is luggage. No airline offers a standard amount of baggage. It will depend on which airline you book. There will be that information of how much luggage capacity like you are going to have on your ticket. In case you have your ticket and it's not clearly mentioned, you can call up your airline a customer service and find out how much luggage you can carry. So AirAsia is one of the most famous budget airlines. They don't offer check-in baggage at all. So you can only have the hand baggage with you which you're going to take into the cabin. But in case you want to check in any baggage, you can pay a separate money, but it's not included in your flight ticket. Make sure that you know how much free luggage you can carry because in case your suitcases are heavier than how much luggage you're allowed, you will have to pay an excess amount of money or you will have to throw some stuff out in the bin if you don't want to pay that money. Make sure that you also go through the list of things that are not going to be allowed inside your cabin luggage. This is the small suitcase that I'll take with me inside the cabin. Like In here, I can't carry certain electronics like my laptop and all, I do carry because it's important. You can't carry anything sharp. You can't carry liquids that are above 100 ml. So if you're carrying any beauty products, shampoo, conditioner, even toothpaste, and it's bigger than 100 ml, and they find it in your cabin luggage, they will throw it out. Say if you have a power bank, Indian airports now don't allow you to carry your power bank in your check-in luggage. So you'll need to put it in your hand luggage. They will ask you this when you are checking into your flight. After you've packed, go over the rules, go over the list which you'll get online and make sure you've not made any mistake like that because of course in the best case scenario you might just lose those products like they may throw out your toothpaste or shampoo but in a worst case scenario if you put like a power bank in your check-in luggage and they find it, they can stop you from boarding the flight also. So these are really important to completely follow. 
so afterwards you're going to have to get into the airport most indian airports they don't allow like you to get in if you don't have a valid ticket so you're going to need to show them id and a ticket international flight so make sure you have your passport with you because your passport is of course very very important and you're not going to be able to travel without a passport so there'll be a policeman at the entrance of the airport he is going to check your passport and check your air ticket only then he'll let you in once you're inside the airport you're going to have to go to your airline's counter to check in if you're at the airport very early then maybe the check-in won't be open for your flight when i came to bangkok this time i was doing jet airways there'll be jet airways domestic and international within the same airport in mumbai i was traveling from t2 which is terminal 2 and we have international and domestic flights from the same terminal in some cities in india you'll have a separate domestic airport separate international and then you're going to go through your check in procedure he will check your air tickets and he'll check your passport again he or she and that's where they will take your check in baggage they'll weigh your check in baggage to see that you're not like taking too much of weight and you can see that our luggage is under the 25 kilos in case it's above you have an issue there so after he weighs your bags he take in your check in bags when you get your boarding pass he put this little sticker at the back with a barcode this means that they have your luggage so it's sort of really important to make sure that they put this sticker on your ticket if you've checked in luggage that's kind of proof touch wood we've never had any issues with not getting our check in luggage but sometimes your luggage can get misplaced or something so the sticker is going to be important but if you're not checking in any luggage then the sticker is not going to be there now mumbai airport used to have hand baggage tags earlier which means they would put a little tag here on your hand baggage that you were carrying but about a year ago they stopped doing it and now you don't need hand baggage tags but maybe in regional airports in india you might still need it you can ask them to make sure the rules are slightly changing but i really like that the airport authorities are making things lot smoother for indians and they're taking out extra steps and hurdles i just thought i would mention that after you have finished the check in and you leave the counter in case you're very early there's place to sit but it always makes sense to go through the next step now after check in the next step would be security in india the security lines are separate for men and women many foreign countries that's not the case but in india they segregate things you're going to have to keep your luggage to be scanned and you're going to stand in the line so that's where i would say you need to be very alert i don't think people steal things at security but you still need to be aware of all of your belongings if you have a laptop with you you need to open up your bag take out your laptop separately put it in a tray uh, you'll need to put your cell phones also in a tray sometimes if you have like camera and stuff they make you take that out and keep it separately i always have my camera in my hand so keep that separately so you'll need to keep everything there'll be trays there and you need to make sure that everything is put separately and then it all goes through the conveyor belt some countries also make you remove your footwear in india generally they don't ask you to remove your shoes unless you have like boots or something and they are suspicious that you could put anything inside if they are very bulky shoes they will make you remove them but if you're wearing some small shoes or sandals uh they just pass you through so after you have put your stuff on the conveyor belt you need to stand in the line and go through the security yourself it's one at a time you don't try to cut the line and also be really alert for when like your number comes you will go into this little curtained cubicle and the lady there will check you so she'll have this little machine thingy that will check for any metal and she might also pat you down if you have anything in your pockets as uh, she may ask you to remove them so that she can check what they are i had my earphones in my pocket so she just asked me to look at them and then that was fine after you go through security she will stamp your boarding pass again this blue stamp that i have here says security check obviously you will not be allowed to fly if the stamp is not there make sure you get it as soon as you finish your turn out of the cubicle go back to the place where your luggage is and make sure you pick up all of the luggage that you had put out so pick up your suitcase 
pick up the tray in which you put your laptop. If you're not traveling with a laptop, better. When I do like one or two day trips, I avoid carrying laptops. But otherwise, I usually need it for work. Just take everything and then there will be a table there in case like we have to open the suitcase, put the laptop back in and all of that stuff. Next after security, you'd have to go through the counter that's only there for international flights. It's called immigration. This is not gendered lines. You can go stand in any line. So this is another thing that the airport authorities have made a little better because just a year ago, you had to fill out a separate immigration form before going through immigration. Now you don't have to fill it out. So that's really cool. Just go stand in the line, be orderly. Immigration, I think, can be one of the longer lines. So security and immigration, these can sometimes take a lot of time, depending on what time of the day, how many flights, how many people on duty. These things will take you like an hour maybe. At immigration, they usually ask you to go to a counter one by one. So if you're traveling with your friends and all, uh, you'll have to go to separate counters. Sometimes if it's old people, they allow two to go together. But these are government officials. They're very strict. They're very serious. So don't fool around when you are at the immigration counter and answer their questions. They'll probably ask you some very basic questions. Like they ask us, why are we traveling to Thailand? So we are coming to Thailand purely for like tourism and recreation. So just tell him you're coming for a holiday. That would apply for any other place. If you're traveling for work, you have to be honest and tell them you're traveling for a job or something. He will ask you here about the visa for the country you're visiting. So many of the countries I've visited recently have been visa on arrival. Thailand, visa on arrival. Sri Lanka, visa on arrival. But in case you're going to like any other country like Europe or USA, so somewhere that requires a visa, he'll probably check the visa. Sometimes they'll just try to test your knowledge and trouble you by asking some weird questions. Just make sure you confidently answer the questions and everything will be good. After you get through, immigration he will stamp your passport one page of your passport you can move out from his counter but before you really leave the area make sure he has stamped your passport they always will but still there are signs there that also says make sure that there's a stamp on your passport also every country's immigration doesn't allow you to do any photography or videography there so i could not really film this process after you've passed through immigration you're basically free and clear and all of the steps at the airport of india are complete then you'd usually reach the duty-free area and that's where you can do a little bit of shopping if you want duty-free you'll get foreign products at little cheaper prices i guess mostly there'll be alcohol there'll be cigarettes there'll be makeup perfumes and chocolates these are the main things that you'll get at duty free if you want to buy them so if you buy chocolates you can start eating at the airport only but in case you buy alcohol please know that you are not supposed to open the alcohol bottles until you've reached your destination so they'll give it to you in a sealed bag don't open it that is very important or you'll probably get in trouble you know if you're traveling with alcohol Every country allows you a different amount of alcohol inside. So say I wanted to bring alcohol to Bangkok. Bangkok only allows one bottle per person. If you're entering India, uh, India allows two liters or two bottles per person. And there might be some countries that even allow you to get like three bottles and stuff. I think New Zealand allows three bottles. So this is also something you have to follow uh, if you're buying liquor and duty free. Then that is just about it. For the airport procedures, you can chill, you can breathe easy, you can go and eat something that you want to eat. There are being food courts. I always go to KFC because that's my personal favorite. You can do whatever you want. Then you need to check what gate your flight is going to be at. So our flight was from gate 85B because Mumbai's T2 airport is really big. It's gate 85. If you're going from a smaller airport within India, there usually won't be too many gates check what gate you're going to be and check what's the boarding time. Whenever the boarding time is mentioned, make sure that you're at the gate, I would say at least half an hour before. And there is place to sit at every gate. There are toilets close to every gate. So then you just need to be at your gate and you need to then take your flight when they allow you to board. 
Sometimes in Mumbai airport you will get an aero bridge where you can walk directly into your flight. Sometimes you will need to take a bus and they will take you to the flight. This time we had to take a bus. She was not the best but it was okay. So we finished talking about everything that you're going to do at your home airport when you're leaving your country. Now you just need to get on the flight and spend your time on the flight however you like. Flight to Bangkok specifically is 4 hours so it's not much. You can sleep, you can play games, you can watch movies. Some airlines will provide you with a meal. Some want, it depends on your ticket. Sometimes you can buy a meal, whatever. After the 4 hour journey is over, we will arrive in Bangkok airport and now I'll take you through the Bangkok airport visa on arrival procedure. So you can take a visa from India also, a Thai visa, but you need to send your passport and your application to Delhi by courier. We have never done that. We always take the visa when we reach the country because they allow it, they offer it to Indians. Each country's visa procedures are vastly different many of them will not allow visa on arrival and you will need to take the visa early only you will need to apply when you're in india but visa on arrival is just really easy and as long as you have everything that you need like the money the documents you won't have any issues when you reach bangkok airport there will be signs all around pointing you to the visa on arrival area you need to look at where those signs are because each time you'll arrive at a separate gate. You also need to have local currency at that point to pay for your visa. So you need to make sure like which currency you need for the visa. If you're going to Sri Lanka, they ask for US dollars. So if you have American dollars with you, you can pay for the visa in American dollars. But in Thailand, they require your visa fees to be paid in the local currency only. We usually exchange some Thai baht at a money changer in Mumbai only. And there are many authorized money changers and you can directly exchange your Indian rupees and get Thai baht. Each country also has different laws regarding their currency. My mother has just informed me that you're not allowed to take a big amount of Indian rupees outside the country. Apparently, you're not allowed to have more than a few thousand rupees. Wherever in the world you're traveling, the one currency that will be very easy to exchange is always going to be American dollars. Every money changer will accept it. In case you didn't manage to get your hands on Thai baht, make sure that you get your hands on American dollars and you can exchange there. The visa fee will be different depending on when you're going. I have paid 1000 baht also per person for an entry into Thailand for a visa. But this latest time we came, it's 2000 baht. One Thai baht is equal to a little over 2 rupees. Currency rates get complicated to calculate, but there are always currency calculation apps that are available for cell phones. So that will make these calculations easy if you're not good at doing quick mental math like me. So when you reach the visa on arrival gate in Thailand, you'll need to fill out two forms the visa on arrival form and you'll need to fill out the immigration form make sure that you fill it in either blue or black pen only we learned this the hard way they won't accept your form if it's in any color pen they are quite strict with rules you can't argue with them okay so both the forms have very basic questions on them so they'll ask you your name they'll ask you your home address your home country your passport number as long as you have your passport, your ticket with you, your information, you just need to stand or sit there and fill it out. It's not hard to fill out. You also need to have passport size photos with you to put on your visa form. Make sure that you take very recent passport photos because if you look even a little different from your passport photo, even if your hair is a different length, they might make a big fuss. So just take recent passport photos before you travel and this goes for every country actually. You never know when you will need passport photos for any form or application. Otherwise, you'll be forced to take an expensive one in a foreign country. In my passport cover, I have a Ziploc bag uh, full of photos. So that is something to have. In case you don't, you can get it done at the airport, but it's expensive. 
So for the Thai visa on arrival, other than these two forms, the visa form and the immigration form, you will need a few more documents. You need a proof of hotel booking or hostel booking for the whole time that you are going to be there in Thailand. So say you're doing seven days in Bangkok and say you're doing seven days in Phuket because you can do a maximum of 14 days on a visa on arrival. Make sure that you have a valid return ticket in 14 days or they will not let you enter the country, okay? Again, these rules are different for each country, but for Thailand, you need to get out within 14 to 15 days strictly. Don't let it go one minute above 15 days. So we usually keep it in 14. Some places say 14, some places say 15. So you will need to have stay bookings, whether you use website. I use Airbnb a lot. And if you would like to check out Airbnb, click the link in the description bar below. I booked this hostel also on Airbnb. And Airbnb is great for budget stays. If you're booking in a hotel, you can do hotels.com, booking.com, Agoda. So while foreign nationals might have the luxury of entering the country without a proof of stay, you're an Indian. So you need to have the proof, yes, that this is where I'm going to be staying. This is my booking. And they will check that very thoroughly. In case you are staying with a friend or something like that you will need to make sure they give you proper proof of like where you're going to be staying because then the visa on arrival people might make you call them up and they might want to talk to them so the proof of stay is something that's very important and then you'll also need to show them that you have valid return tickets to go within 14 or 15 days so then you just stand in the line and wait to process your visa. There are two lines on visa and arrival. So you can stand on the regular line that's a little bit longer. And that costs 2000 baht a person. Or you can go to the express line, short line, but you pay an extra 200 baht per person. So the visa fee becomes 2200. And in case that money, like 400 rupees is not too much to you, I would recommend going in the express line because they actually process your application more easily, more quickly if you stand in the express line and the cost difference is not too much. If you're going to be standing in the regular line, it might take you one, two hours, but in the express line, you'll be done uh, by half an hour. So they will ask you all questions. They will ask you for all these proofs. They'll check everything. They'll take your money from you in cash. Then they will take your form. Then you need to go ahead and just sit there and then sometime they will have stamped the visa on your passport. So most of the countries, the visa is just a stamp in the passport and it's not uh, an external paper so that you don't lose it. After you get your visa, you need to go through the final step, passport control. So it's really similar to Indian immigration. So passport control is a pretty easy after he's looked at your passport, looked at your picture, looked at your face and taken your picture, you need to go and collect your luggage. Usually when you're in the flight only, they will announce on what belt your luggage is coming. Every airport has a lot of different belts starting from the number one. This time I think we had belt 15. So that's where your checked in luggage will be returned to you. So you need to go to that belt and then pick up your luggage. The last step at the airport of the country you reach will be local customs. So there are two places that you can get out of customs. There's a red channel and green channel. Customs is just about the value of the things that you have. So you're not supposed to be bringing anything very expensive into the country. I always take the green channel because I'm never traveling with like a lot of expensive things and 99% of people will take the green channel but I know professional photographer friends and all who travel with a lot of very expensive camera equipment they sometimes like actually have that declared on their passport so that when they are arriving back to India the people there don't say that you have bought this equipment from abroad so then there are different procedures but most people you'll just have to go through the green channel and they'll just look at you if they feel like they may ask you to scan your baggage but most people they just let them through 
even if they make you scan your baggage it's totally fine if they find something in your baggage that looks weird they may ask you to open up your luggage once you've got out of the customs you reach the country and you can go to the place that you're going to be staying however you want from bangkok airport you can take um, airport metro link you can also take uber or you can take their airport cab service i didn't even know that uber is there at bangkok airport but my friend recently just took uber so there are a lot of options that you can choose that is it you have arrived Hopefully this video was useful for you if you guys are thinking of traveling to the country for the first time I outlined my experience with going to Thailand everyone's experience is going to be slightly different if you're going to a different country the procedures may be a little different but I just wanted to give you guys an idea and an example of things if you have any questions that you think I can answer specifically regards to my journey Uh, then leave a comment below if you're going to ask me about traveling to another country that I haven't been to. I personally won't be able to help you, but there are a lot of resources out on the internet for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.